Okay, so here's your opener. So uh, I'm going to explain each one of these parts a little bit by little bit. Uh, first of all, just so you know that, uh, well, this is supposed to be quite an endeavor. It's supposed to be an all summer thing. So when you're learning this and going through reps by yourself, uh, remember it's that. It's not supposed to be learned, you know, in a week. It's supposed to be learned over about three or four months. So um, if you're going through this and you're getting to the end by, you know, day three or four, you're probably doing it wrong. So uh, you want to take your time and work through each one of these phrases and think about exactly what you want out of each one of the notes. Every note is important. Don't kind of skip on things just to get to the end. So go through it and analyze every little aspect of your playing. Make sure sticks are in the right positions, your body's aligned right, correctly. Make sure your feet line up with your hand. Think about all those things when you're doing little reps and repetitions to it because that's how we get good. If you do a rep 15 times and you're just kind of getting the basics of it, you're not really getting anything out of it. If you do it 15 times and really get it perfect, you're getting a lot better. So, think about that when you're going through it. Alright, so the way we're going to go through this piece is you see it's all labeled in um, sections and let, uh, numbers. So we have a B1, a B2, a B3, a C1, and a C2, and a C3. All, uh, all, the, way, all the way through like that. Uh, there's a reason for that. Would you like to know why? Not because I like numbers and letters, although I do. Um, we're going to do those for practicing purposes. So we're labeling each phrase. A phrase is a musical idea. So B1 is an idea, B2 is an idea, B3 is an idea. It's, a, it's like a sentence. And then the letters are like paragraphs. Our B is a paragraph, a big statement, then a C is a different statement, a s different section, and D is a different section. It's like paragraphs, okay? So, um, yeah, take your time when you learn this, you use those. So, learn a B1, learn a B2, rep those a lot, and then put all of B together. Okay? So that's how we're going to do it. First, for now, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of each one of the things. This is not how you're supposed to practice. Look in my eyes. Do not practice it like this. I'm just giving you the idea and the basics of it. Don't just do it once or twice and think you're done with it. Please. <laughs> okay, so here's B1. Yeah, that's an idea. It's based off the same thing. This is the idea, and we just kind of variate it. Sometimes we just add the and, the one and, two ands, or we stop on one. So really get that fun. And then the other idea is the pair of diddles. Those pair of diddles are a little softer, so remember to keep that about uh, six inches. Okay, that's B1. B2 takes a pair of diddles. Well, let me play it first. Okay. We do a pair of diddle and that pair of diddle thing again. So listen to this first bar. Let's practice that a whole bunch of times. Oh, and soft. After you get that and you're really perfect, your feet line up. Your hands are perfect, your body looks good, add the paradiddle at the end. Okay? And that should take care of bar 15 and 16. Then we have the 5-8 thing, and that works in 4, so if you put your metronome on... Oh yeah, if you don't use a metronome in this, I'll probably cry at rehearsals, okay? Remember, when you practice with a metronome, you're practicing more correctly than with that. So, if you practice better, you get better. It's not extra work, it's just uh, hit a button. Okay? So, bar 17 and 18. Okay? Uh, it works in 4, but it's, uh, it's in 5-8, and it's a little weird little lick. Take your time on that, it's a big one. Right? B3 starts like this. Let me explain this one for you. Um, we have a triplet thing to both. Just try to crescendo that. Okay. And then a uh, pair of diddles. Nothing hard. 
But uh, bar 23 and 24, we have a little trick. First of all, get those up. Notice how my hands are up. A lot of people do up like this. That's the same as regular. That's regular. Up is this. Arms are up. Okay. So your hands shouldn't be where they normally are. They should be above your head. And we have my famous switch to match grip thing. I'm using that too much, but I like it. So let's do it. Um, is the idea. So we're gonna try to find a spot where your hands switch, point, and then stop. So. So everything's kind of like metronomic as well. So work on that. Or uh, the second beat should be your switch. Third beat should be your point. Or uh, the second note of the triplet should be your point. The third one. Wait, I said that one. First one should be a hit, and then the second one should be a switch. The third one should be a point, and then about that both on the downbeat. All right. Okay. C one. Uh, enjoy. There's not many of this. Easy. But count these breaths. Make sure when you're going through your sections, especially the C section, to practice counting. Because you're not playing by yourself. There's a whole bunch of other people playing at that point. So if you don't count it, it ain't going to happen very well. Alright, so actually practice when you're doing your C. Uh, practice that with counting. I'll let you work that out. That one's not that hard. But D is. Yay! So I gave you a little break at C because I knew D was going to be hard. A nice guy. Uh, D is a split part, so let me explain this. Uh, D1 has a split at bar 42, and bar 44, and bar 46. The splits are going to go back and forth with everybody. So, uh, we're going to split, the outer players are going to play that bottom, uh, the bottom staff, the bottom facing notes at bar 42, and, and bar 46, okay? So, we're going to have two different snare parts happening at once. It's going to be fun! That's why you're watching this video, because you can practice it, right? Okay, so um, the first time through the center snare does the back sticking, the outer snares do the regular part. Okay, this part 44, the outside snares do the back sticking, and the center snare does the part. Then bar 46, back to the center snare doing the back sticking, and the outer snares doing that part. So it's the same part, it's just filtering it out. Everybody's going to do something different every time. She's a hard one. Practice this a lot. First of all, if you don't know high moms, uh, practice this. High mom is you flip and you kind of do a tip of the stick that way. If you don't know how to do that, Google it or YouTube it. It's out there. It's a pretty common one. Okay? Um, I'll bring you in a little closer. That's much better. Alright, so here, check that. That would be the center snare version. The outer snares are going to do, it's the same legs, just at different times, okay? So work that out on your own, I'm not going to explain it. But uh, let me explain the tricks for you first. So the trick is a back stick and... And then we do... It's pretty hard, so you got to make sure you can get that pretty easily. Um, remember, this is probably going to take a week of just working on these measures, like a lot, okay? Um, and more than a week to actually make it sound good and look good. So, uh, don't just do this like three or four times and think you have it. Trust me. I spent an hour and a half writing this part, so you spent, better spend at least an hour and a half every couple days uh, working on it. So, um, the lick after that is... Everybody's going to do the 16s, so as singles. So you really have to make sure they're as smooth as you can. If you get tight like that, then it's not going to work because everybody's doing their singles. So can't be uh, can't be happy. All right. So then you put the whole lick together. Okay. You should practice that one like a bunch of times because you'll be playing it in dispersed. Everybody's playing that. So then just work out what part you are. You know who's center and whatnot. Alright? That's D. D will take a while. Well, actually, that's most of D. D4. Let me finish. Yep. Again, with 
the arms at the end, and again with the pair to the diddles, okay? Uh, you know I like pair to the diddles, so practice those a lot. If you can practice your pair to the diddles, you'll see that 53 and 54 is just a little pattern. Kind of a, it's a hemiola. It's uh, a different group of numbers within a bigger group of numbers. So it kind of fits really well. Yeah? And then the part before that big crescendo, you could start at edge. Um, from there on out, I purposely made it a little bit easier because I figured D is the hardest section because uh, for everybody, D3 is a split tenor feature, so they're going to have a handful, and a pit feature that's very hard. So D1 is our is our big spot, so or D is our big spot, so you have to practice that. E from there to the end is a little bit of repeat. that first left hand is very strong. Okay? Um, and you can figure that other stuff out. It's the same lick as before. Use the arms for the both. Okay? E3, sound like this. Okay? It's just a uh, diddle exercise. Okay? You can get that in E4. Purposely made the end a little bit easier so we could get that nice and strong. Don't doesn't mean that not to practice it much, it just means you don't have to uh, uh, spend so much time deciphering it. Okay? Hope this helped. This was 14 minutes of your life, um, and it's going to be a good summer if we use this 14 minutes wisely. So, um, watch the video frequently, check each one of your parts. Uh, this is about a, a lot of at home and doing your own work. This isn't going to be a 7-8 rehearsal and put this all thing together. It's, you know, can take some time. So, practice according. Enjoy. Finger invading. Okay, sorry.